Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe Live. And um, today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about the front motor. Um, now, or uh, actually it's the whole front powertrain. Now, uh, you may recall uh, from my last um, uh, endeavor with uh, Ford Motor Company's uh, powertrain system, I, uh, I wasn't as thrilled as maybe I could have been. But um, that system versus this system, uh, there's a very, very big difference. Um, what I wanted to do first off is show you one of the things that some people don't really understand. This is what the gearbox looks like inside. So this is the Tesla gearbox. Now, one of the things we look at from a creative standpoint is how many, how many uh, ball bearing races do they have? This one's got six. Um, it has a differential and, um, and everything that you'd normally want to see is in here, but it's a little stronger. This one, um, this unit here is only 65 horsepower. This one's about, we have uh, arguments, but it's either 150 or 180 horsepower. So it's quite a bit bigger, a bigger load, but at the end of the day, the Tesla version versus the Ford version is much more complicated. So what I'd like to do is take this thing a little bit to pieces so you can get an idea of what's going on. First off, let's talk about the bearings we have here. So we got one that goes here, two, three, four. So only four bearings in this, uh, in this uh, operation versus Tesla's six. Let's look at some of the other clever stuff that, uh, that we found when we were getting into this. Oh, there we go. So let's start with this, okay? Let's start with this. Okay, so remember I said that this product has a differential. Now that's this big giant thing under here, inside there. This is the differential in this product. It's, it's, actually, it's actually right inside of one of the other gears. You can see bits and pieces of it in here. This is really, really sharp. I could not believe my eyes when this came out. This is a really good design. So um, this came from Magna, and uh, some of you were asking about who, who makes these things. This is a Magna uh, gearbox, and this is really brilliant. I really do like this. So let's, let's look at some of these other components right now. So right here, what we have is a single solitary piece and the, the gear is not uh, welded on or whatever. This is machined in place. So this is gonna be a forging and uh, the forging has got everything machined into it. This is great because it basically, um, it eliminates any kind of problem that you're gonna have <coughs> with, um, with welding or with pressing or with uh, freeze fits. I really like this a lot. This is really, really well done. This is the output shaft that goes into there. And this is what um, allows them to have a, um, uh, an inline drive system. Um, this is really, really superb. Again, um, the gears are all machined in place. Everything here is forged, which means it's gonna last for eternity. And my favorite one piece forging is this one right here. In the olden days, this would be nearly impossible to manufacture, but with high speed machining and uh, with creative engineering, you've got, uh, you've got a, a product here that, uh, that is just, this is outstanding. I really, really like everything that happened with this, uh, with this motor and drive system. So, Let's, uh, let's move on a little bit. Um, one thing we, we forgot, or I forgot to mention was that this, uh, <clears throat> this center plate here that is a, basically it's a bearing carrier and, uh, and pass-through plate. This is going to be sandwiched between this component, which is the end cap, and this one, which is the actual motor itself. So let's have a look here. Now, this has got this doesn't have RTV. This is using a seal. Uh, and uh, the reason that I would pick for doing something like this is quite frankly because 
I want, I don't want our TV um, maybe messing up something else that's going on inside this. So under normal circumstances, I'm a big fan, but for this kind of a design, uh, I, I'd rather probably go with the, um, go with these um, uh, uh, gaskets. So we've got a gasket on this side and a gasket on that side where the housing goes. And to me, that's just the right way to do the job. Now let's look at something else I thought was kind of cool. So this is the housing plate. And again, you've got the bearing carriers that are on this side. But on this side, this is where the stator goes. So let me move this for just a second. So the stator is pressed inside here, okay? Now, when, the, when that's pressed inside, I don't have to have a whole bunch of bolts like what we had on the other design. Remember, they had those great big long bolts. By putting this in and pressing it in, as they've done with, uh, with uh, this stator, they eliminated those bolts, and I kind of prefer the press to bolting it in place and keeping your fingers crossed and all that other stuff. I don't like it. I do like this. This doesn't use oil. This is using just the coolant that you'd have inside the vehicle for the rest of the, uh, the rest of the, and look at how big these slots are. Okay, now this has got, um, this has got a, like a helix here, and this is really a good feature that we saw once before over here on the BMW i3. We like this. This is a good idea. So why is it a good idea? Well, number one, it doesn't have a, its own separate pump. Number two, there's no filter that I have to get involved with. And number three, um, I don't, I, I, I'd, rather, I'd, rather use the, uh, I'd rather use the coolant than oil any old time because I just, I think that this is the right way to do it. So no little squirters, no, no filters, no extra pumps, nothing that would get in the way of, uh, of just getting the jobs done. Now on the ID4, <clears throat> the rear was, was, uh, was bolted together, or not the, uh, yeah, the ID4, it was bolted together. On the Ford rear, it was also bolted together. I'm not really a fan, so I think that, uh, I think that Ford did, or whoever designed this, I think this is Magna, and um, this is a good design. Now, hairpin. The stator is a hairpin design, and um, I, I gotta tell you, I've, heard some information here that kind of is confidential, but pushing a hairpin design out, I thought was easier than a wound, a bobbin type. And um, now I'm being told that maybe I was incorrect. I've been hearing some terrible news about how much, uh, not scrap, but uh, rework has to happen. This is only about 70% first time right Whereas um, uh, a wound, a bobbin wound, um, wound uh, stator um, is running around um, 80, 80%, maybe 85%. Um, I, I, uh, and this, I knew this already because of surface, uh, the surface area on here, um, skin effect is how electric motors work or how electricity works. So it's not how big the chunk of a uh, copper is, it's actually, you can only count that outside skin. That outside skin is where the, the electricity wants to move along. This um, is a little less efficient, um, and I knew that, but I thought that if we could get the, the, uh, the motors out less expensively, this would be a good idea. But um, like I said, I'm being educated. I, I really didn't know, uh, I didn't know about this 70% thing. So if I'm looking at this now, I'm going to be changing my mind as far as uh, why, why did Tesla go with a, um, uh, a wound stator? Uh, maybe they're correct, and maybe this isn't the right way to go. So I take it back. As soon as I get information that sounds real from people who know what they're talking about, then I, uh, I change my mind. It's only a fool that will stay in one, one position forever. So. I'm really excited, happy to see what, to what they've done here though. This is a really nice design, um, although 
maybe, uh, maybe wound would be better. I'm not sure, but th this looks pretty damn good to me. So let's, uh, let's take and, um, and, um, and look at the, uh, the laminates in the rotor. So I'm not going to bring this too close, but anyway, the rotor falls into or would go inside this hole. And this is what spins around. And the stator is the thing that's inside that housing. And that stator means stationary. So let's have a look at the, the uh, configuration for these, uh, for these magnets. They still have a double V configuration, but this... This one is a little different than what you see in the rear of the um, in the rear motor. You can see that whoop, one's quite a bit uh, one's quite a bit bigger than the other. This is the the front motor, um, but you can see that the V configuration is different. Let's look at one that doesn't stick. So you can see here that um, if we look at this, you can see the 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 V configurations don't aren't quite exactly the same. So there must be some magic there. There's obviously some engineering that's being done in order to make sure that uh, the double V's are giving the maximum amount of, uh, uh, amount of um, um, energy. And uh, as normally you'd expect, these are neodymium magnets, <coughs> which is kind of like what everybody uses. One other thing here while we're still here, I. Um, this is, um, this is a, uh, the little uh, block that they're using, a connector block for the, um, for the power to the electric motor. Now, why I'm bringing this up, because normally this would be a big nothing, is because this is the same one that we're going to be showing you in a second in the inverter, which I'm also um, pretty excited about. So, let's, um, let's see here. Um, Oh yeah, one, one other thing, the, um, these magnets, they are definitely glued in place. I have never seen so much glue ever on any of the products. This thing is glued everywhere. It's also <coughs> stapled or stitched. So if we look here, you can see that there's a little tabs, these little tabs. What happens is these will go into um, a stapling machine or, or, a, or a deforming machine. It'll come down and give it a whack, and that will cause these, um, cause these laminates to stick together. So you don't want them sliding. So you can see here that they've got a key. And maybe I can make this work. And there you go. So this key shows that this is a shift. So as I mentioned before, you always have um, a, a, an offset and has to get rid of noise. This one actually has a key inside. And now you can see how when you line up those two keys, these things aren't in line anymore. And that's because this has been shifted on the shaft. So there you go. So these are little things that, uh, that, uh, that we can pick up and, and let you know about. So um, uh, some people are interested in numbers. There's 226 laminates um, in the um, uh, the front rotor here. Uh, the length of the stack is 61 and a half millimeters. The, the length of the rear stack was 124, 20 to 25 uh, millimeters. And then um, for the ID4, the length of the stack was um, 174 uh, millimeters. So you can see that everybody is kind of like a little bit different. So the Ford, so let's talk about the front at 61 and a half. That's only a six. Um, that's only a 65 horsepower motor. And then we look at the rear of the, uh, the Mach-E, that one's at 125. And then you look at the, uh, the length of the stack for the ID4, 174. So everybody's got their own little magic that they wanna try and produce uh, the products with. So this one here um, is doing a really good job. Now, there's a couple of things that I haven't talked about. One of them, there's a couple of hoses and whatnot. All right, so these are the bleeder hoses um, for the uh, cooling system. So let's have a look at the one hose that we don't like, which is this one. And this is a crossover hose. And um, it would have been great if somehow they could have cast this in or done it in a different way. I'm not a big fan on, on this, but, but I mean, sometimes you just back yourself into an engineering issue and that's a cheap and easy way to get it done. So, and it's only coolant. So at the end of the day, 
The coolant lines look all good. Actually, almost everything here looks fabulous. We do have one little, actually, I'll, I'll leave that for a little bit. Um, but, uh, but cover plates, pretty standard. Uh, there's uh, only enough needed to, uh, to get the job done. Everything right here on the, um, everything here for the motor, the gearbox, and the, um, the motor and gearbox. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. This is a really, really good design. Um, the, the folks over at uh, Ford should be happy with this one. So anyway, let's, uh, let's spin the table around and we'll talk a little bit about the inverter. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> here we are on the inverter. So um, let's look at what we were working with the last time. Remember, Uncle Sandy was having a real hard time with all these nuts, bolts, all these different bits and pieces. Ben and I both struggled trying to put this whole thing together and um, it was uh, not, um, not a pretty picture. It took us a long time. We uh, don't usually do takes, retakes and whatnot, but on this thing we had no chance of making, uh, making this work. So this, all this <clears throat> right here, this is the front inverter, or sorry, the rear inverter for the, uh, the Mach-E. Let's push this over here into the other area. Now, one thing I wasn't real thrilled with, but um, we're really, we, it, we, we have to accept that some things um, have to be done the way they're done. And um, this one cable is, um, is what's going to be going from the inverter to the electric motor. Now, why is that cable on there? Well, that's because right here is a cross car beam. And the cross car beam had to be, um, it's, it's supporting the motor and gearbox. Um, it's separating the two actually. And so from an efficiency of design standpoint and so that they could get a frunk, this, um, this had to be done the way it's done. Um, I uh, occasionally get stuck myself um, when I'm designing things and you put in something like this. Instead of having the inverter directly uh, plug into the motor, which is what I'd like to have. Um, sometimes you can't do that. So this motor, um, uh, or sorry, this cable, the one good thing about it is, hey, look, these two connectors are the same. Uh, we didn't see that very often in this design so far, but these two are the same. And I like, I like it anytime somebody can give me commonized parts. So let's just move this out of the way. And by the way, this is where everything mounts to when the motor comes in from underneath. Let's push that out of the way for now. And let's get into the, uh, the inverter. So first off, um, when we were looking at the other inverter, the MOSFETs that were in there, um, I, didn't, I didn't really care for the way they were put together. These are IGBTs. They're a little bit different, but basically they do the same job. Now have a look right here. See these? These pins that are sticking out, these are wicking pins, and this sucks the uh, heat away from these really hot components, the IGBTs. So let's put them in, and you'll see that they fit right down, and then they have a seal. Now, these things grow, uh, they, they expand and contract. So what they've done is they've put in this nifty little spring deal. Am I got it the right way? Okay, so they got this little spring deal. When I push down these bolts, you'll notice that it's got a kind of a spring here that holds it in place, pushing the IGB down and making sure that the seal's always done. So a cool idea, uh, much, much more elegant than what we saw last time with that four piece design or five piece design and then two screws and a partridge and a pear tree. This is, this is better, I like this, okay? So we'll just put that right back on there. Then over here, these are the capacitors. Now, I, I, I'm not a real big fan of a, a whole bunch of little capacitors going in. Actually, on the old product, uh, that did have something that was kind of cool. They had, uh, the, the capacitor there was in one big chunk. And I, I, I prefer it if they did that here, um, if, if it would have been at all possible. But that's a specialized component. So we look at this and you know what? I, I guess I, I really like things that, 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 that look elegant to me. 
So remember when we were looking at the electric motor, I said the connectors, or the bus bars, are the same. And I like that. I like it when somebody goes to a little bit of extra mile to make sure that <coughs> everything's kind of connected. So we've got this bus bar, and now uh, we've got a second one that's coming in here, and it goes in here. Yeah, okay, so we've got the, uh, the next bus bar, which is going on top, and then our third bus bar, which, um, which is going to go right like this, and you can see that this is kind of like not as easy to line up, but all of the componentry is going to be going right through. And now what we're into is a situation where I don't like welding um, when I'm assembling, but this can all be welded now. All these points are open. All this welding can be done, and it's only one, one shot at it. So <clears throat> we've got this lower bus bar, and we've got the upper bus bar. We can weld all of the um, IGBTs, and uh, we can weld in all of the uh, connectors here from the, um, from the capacitors all in one felt swoop. This is a good idea. These, these, are, these are really good ideas. I'm, I'm really, uh, really surprised and happy. I mean, um, this is such a big difference uh, from the other one, it isn't even funny. So then after we've got, uh, after we've got this in place, now we've got is a, a plate. Now, we're, there's been some discussion about what that plate or how that plate actually does things. And I'm not even going to try and locate. So we've got, the, um, we've got the IGBT pins coming out here. And you'll remember that I got uh, upset because it's easy to bend these things. And I, I don't like it. So now with this, I'm going to be putting this in place. And I can't make it work, and I'm going to waste time. So anyway, these things have been together and apart several different times. But you'll notice that these pins look different. They look different than what you saw before. And the reason that they look different is because now what we're looking at is this circuit board. First, this plate's going to go on. The uh, pins are going to come up. And now I put this plate on. Now, that means that these pins are going to try and find holes. In the other example, I didn't like it because it had to go through a hole, a precise hole in the circuit board, <clears throat> and then it had to be soldered on the, on the far side. These are different. These are called vertical floating connectors. See how it works here? So the pin is going to go in, and it finds its way, and each one of these things will have its own little mm, uh, compensating, uh, sorry, yeah, compensating uh, factor that's associated with trying to put it together. And there's no, there's no, uh, there's, there's no soldering. You just push it on, they snap in place. This is what we do for almost everything that we, if we're designing it, this is kind of like the component that we would use <clears throat> for doing blind assembly. So that would go on top of this, okay? That to uh, envision that cover being on there. And then we would uh, put the top cover on. Now, now what we can do is flip it over. And you remember it took two of us and, um, and a lot of luck to make it happen before. <clears throat> now, now what we're looking at is the flow pattern associated with how we're going to be cooling these uh, IGBTs and actually the whole, the whole system. So in here, this is our inlet. The... Uh, Coolant comes in, it goes around, it goes around this IGBT, fills up that pattern, goes around this IGP, around that IGP, and then it goes into a tortured path, and that will allow it to get to this component, and then you're going back to the source. After you've got everything assembled, this cover plate goes over the top, it, it also has a seal on it, it goes over the top and it's bolted down and voila, we are complete. And I got to tell you, this is so much better than what we saw on the other design. I mean, this is, uh, these guys should sit, stand around and pat themselves on the back. They did a great job. So let me just uh, wrap up and say that 
on this component, the inverter um, for the front on the uh, Mach-E. We've got 47 internal fasteners. We had 95 on the ID4, and we had 83 on the rear for the Mach-E. There are 24 external fasteners um, uh, on, the, um, on this system. Um, there's 20 on the ID4, and there's 16 on the rear for the, um, uh, the Mach-E. So there's more fasteners on the outside for this product because of sealing and because they've got <clears throat> the cross car beam in the way. But at the end of the day, this is a far superior design. If we look at it in total, this has got less fasteners completely. So I'm, I don't know what to, what to say except um, uh, to say thank you to the, uh, whoever designed this, making my job easier and, um, and quite frankly, giving me something to look at that is true, uh, valuable engineering. So uh, congratulations to the folks over at, um, at uh, Magna and uh, LG. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it's so long, but this is really worth talking about. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.